So Euler's method is a way in which we can uh, approximate an answer for a differential equation that perhaps we can't physically solve. Okay, so we might have an involved derivative that it's not feasible to solve for the actual function, but we need to evaluate the function at particular points. So Euler's method is one method, a numerical method, um, to get approximate values to a DE, all right, or approximate solutions to a DE. So basically, what Euler's method is, if we come down here, there's our rule. That's our, our formula sheet rule, okay? We start off with some initial conditions, x0 and y0, all right? And we start with a derivative function, dy dx equals f of x, all right? So that's typically the information we get given, dy dx equals at these initial conditions, all right? Um, so what we're looking to do instead here is typically we just slowly increment towards the solution value that we want. So H, okay, so we increase um, our step size just a little bit each time, and the smaller H is, the more accurate our, our solution. Um, and, and then we just successive, uh, do the calculations, successive calculations, we actually then um, determine our solution, all right? So I guess mathematically what we're saying is each y value, okay, is the previous y value plus the step size times the previous gradient, okay? So that's what this statement here gives me. So h is our small increase, n is the number of steps that we require. All right, so let's have a look at the solution in, in practice. So this time we've got a, a fairly large step size of 0.5 and I've got a derivative function f dash of x is equal to x plus y. So it just happens to be in terms of x and y here. Initial conditions, y equal to 0, x is equal to 1. I now want you to find out the function value at x equal to 3. So I typically before now we might have solved that de, okay, worked out our c value and then substituted in for x equal to 3. That's my exact solution. So even if you can do that, if you're asked to use Euler's method to come up with an approximate solution, you need to do that, all right? So here's my rule. The next y value is the previous y value plus h times the function value evaluated at the previous x value, all right? So let's have a look. x0 is equal to one, y0 is equal to zero. They're my initial conditions. So by definition, y1 is equal to y0 plus h times f of x0. Now, f of x is just adding the x and y values together. So that's what I'm doing here. I add the x and y values together. So x0 plus y0 is just, back over here to the left, is just 1 plus 0. A half times 1 plus 0 is a half. 0 plus that is a half, so y1 is equal to a half. So let's record that. y1 is a half. x1 is just x0 plus h, so the next x value, which is just 1 plus 1, point, uh, 1 plus 0.5, which is 1.5. So there's my first iteration, okay, my first um, approximate value. At x equal to 1.5, y is approximately a half. Let's keep going because we have to get up to x equal to 3. So if I add 0.5 to 1.5, I get x2 is equal to 2.0. I've now got to work out what y2 is equal to. So y2 is equal to y1 plus h times x1 plus y1. Okay, because that's what the function is, x plus y. So x1 plus y1, if we go back to our values, was 1.5 plus 0.5, so that's 2. 2 times a half is 1, 1 plus a half is 1.5. There's my y2 value. And we continue to go through that process, all right? So step by step, if by chance we had to do it in a tech-free, two probably stops at two iterations. Um, but fortunately for us, our CAS provides um, the necessary um, function to enable us to come up with the approximate values. So if we go to Euler, okay, under our catalogue, uh, the syntax, if you like, is, um, so we have Euler, 
the function, which is the derivative, okay, and then you've got to list your independent and dependent variables, which are x and y. We then want, as a set, the set of x values you're interested in. So we want to work from 1, which was our initial x value, up to 3, which is the final one we're interested in, comma, okay, now, what is, if 1 is my first value, what was the y value at that point? And that was 0, which is that 0 there. And then we have, okay, what's your step size, which is 0 0.5. All right, so it's the derivative, x, y, um, the set of x values you want to generate values for, your initial y value, which has to correspond to the initial x value, um, and then your step size. And you can see there, there's my set of calculations that match off to the points in between 3.25, the 1.5 I had, etc. All right. All right, so if we have another a look at another one, again, we have a derivative, dy dx equals natural log of x. We're interested from x equal to 3 to 3.5 using step size of 0.1, which is typically the step size we use. And we know that at x equal to 3, y is equal to 2. So if I come straight to my Euler CAS instruction, dy dx is natural log of x, comma x, comma y. I'm interested in the values from 3 to 3.5. And at x equal to 3, y is equal to 2, and I have a step size of 0 0.1. Close bracket, enter. And so you can see there, um, I haven't got the whole screenshot there, but some say 3.1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, so, okay, so we actually had to have all the values, didn't we? It didn't ask for a specific value, but at 3.5 we get there. So, Manually, you can see the calculation. So my first calculation, if we just sort of address that one, perhaps, we know that at x equal to 0, sorry, at x equal to 3, y is equal to 2. So there's my x naught and y naught. I've got a step size of 0.1, which means that y1 is equal to y naught, which is a 2, plus step size 0.1 times the function at x naught, which is a function at 3. So 2 times 0.1096 is 2.1096. We can just sort of catch the end of it there in our case. Y2 is the previous Y value, 2.10986, plus 0.1 times the function evaluated at the next X value, which is 3 plus 0.1, 3.1. If we evaluate that on our CAS, we get our 2.23. So you can see straight away that you can't actually do this problem involving a natural log of x without your calculator. And if you've got your calculator, well, you've got access to the function to actually generate the values. All right. So some things to note. Euler's method gives a numerical solution to the DE, a, an approximate solution. Okay. It, it will never give a general solution, but just give us a table of values for x. And these values for x that we've worked out and we probably could have experimented and, and worked out what the exact values would be and compared them. They aren't obviously as accurate as the actual solution. Um, so this information needs to be given to us. X naught, Y naught, H and H of X. All right. Yeah, and if, we, if by chance we have to do it by hand, construct a table. All right? All right, there we go.